First up Great. for our lightning round sessions is uh, uh, Amy Jo Olson, who's from our Nebraska, our first Nebraska presenter, yay, <laughs> of the day, um, who is from our uh, Bayright Public Library in Ralston, Nebraska, and talk about how they did a library artist in residence program. That sounds so cool. Uh, so go ahead, Amy, and take it away. Tell us all about what you did there. All right, thank you. Um, I hope everyone is warm here in Omaha. I, well, I'm in, I'm in Omaha right now. Um, it is very cold, so we're I'm in a school building, and I am I am keeping my hands clasped. It is quite quite cold today. Uh, well, I am here to talk to you about uh, the process that the Bayright Public Library in Ralston, Nebraska, uh, went through to secure an artist in residence and then how the programming went and what results we saw. Um, so we'll talk through those things. Um, let's see if I can control my PowerPoint here. There we go. Um, so the first question is, if you're looking at doing a program like this, is why should you do it? Why is an artist in residence, why is expanding access to the arts um, something that libraries should be involved in? Uh, so to answer that, I've got a couple quotes from the from the ALA interpretation of the Library Bill of Rights here. I highlighted the pieces that I think are really important. And I'll just mention the photo that I have here is actually our artist in residence. His name is Fernando Antonio Montejano, um, telling a scary story uh, for kids at our fall, our library and town fall festival. Um, we decided to go forward with a library artist in residence in part because it satisfied some of uh, the core competencies um, pushed forward by the ALA and the um, Children's Library Association. So mm -hmm. learning about the arts expands our vision of humanity, it connects us to our communities, um, and, and arts is something that we're very interested in incorporating um, throughout our library programs. So that's where we started. And so why did our library specifically choose an artist in residence, which you're, if you're unfamiliar with that program, an artist in residence is a an artist that stays with the organization, usually for a period of time, for the purposes of the grant that we applied for and received, which I'll talk a little bit about later. Um, an artist in residence holds more than 30 sessions and those sessions can be defined in different ways they're generally yeah they're not 30 independent sessions but they're um it can be like uh one event might count as two or three sessions depending on the length and the complexity of it um so it's less daunting than it sounds like as far as programming and planning goes uh, but Bayright specifically is in ralston nebraska which is in the center of omaha if you are unfamiliar with it it is a 1.65 square mile piece of land in the center of Omaha, Nebraska. Um, well, surrounded on three sides by Omaha and one side by La Vista. So it's it's a weird, it's kind of an enigma. It's this little <laughs> yeah. independent community in the middle of a large metropolitan area. Um, we are landlocked, so there's no opportunity for expansion. And also the city has moved further and further to the west and the south. Um, around the city of Ralston. So Omaha has moved further to the south and west. And as that has happened, our population has changed in Ralston. So we're now part of almost the older part of the city um, of, or the metropolitan area, which is an interesting place to be. Um, and our, our again, our population has changed and we know that we're missing some of those people. So we're missing people new to the area. We're missing changing demographic groups. Um, the school district that Ralston has also has a much larger area than the city itself. So they have separate demographic needs. So it's an interesting, um, it's a very interesting place to be. We know that we have a growing Latinx population. Um, the difference between the 2010 census and the 2020 census is uh, we had 10% Latinx population within the city of Ralston. By 2020, we had 20%. The school district itself actually has 44% Latinx population. So wow. we've gone from a predominantly older, very white identifying population to a younger, um, non-white identifying population, which comes with awesome opportunities. So you, some of the pictures you see here 
um, I point to the screen like I like you can see me pointing at it. <laughs> um, <laughs> but uh, this is from our Dia de los Muertos uh, program, and Fernando helped with that as well. Um, he is bilingual. His uh, language of birth, language of origin is Spanish. So he's bilingual English, Spanish, and then he speaks a little French as well, which comes in handy with some of our um, our other minority or, or marginalized populations. So it's been a great opportunity to have Fernando there with us. Um, our library use, as I'm sure it does for many of you as well, skews heavily older and white. Um, so we know that we're missing we're missing part of our population. We're not doing a good job reaching them. So art is our way of of reaching out and expanding. And in this context, art includes lots of things. When I talk about uh, the programming that we've done, you'll see some of the different um, things: music, poetry, writing, crafts, um, actual visual art, which you can see here on this slide. Um, so we've done a little of everything. We're kind of dabbling to try and we're throwing spaghetti at the wall to see what sticks. Mm -hmm. So what was our process? It actually wasn't difficult. Um, if you're in Nebraska, I strongly encourage you to check out the Nebraska Arts Council website. Um, I've got a link here for anyone in Nebraska who hasn't accessed that grant money before. It is a very simple application. Um, it does require you to report it, there is a community section where you require where you're required to put in community information. So that's where things like census data or school district data, anything that I that can show your the demographics of your community or a change over time that you're trying to meet is very powerful in that in that particular section. But it is a it is probably the shortest, simplest grant application I have ever filled out. <laughs> So um, I highly encourage you to do that. And if you're not in Nebraska, I encourage you to look for an equivalent organization in your state. So this is the Nebraska Arts Council, but there are, there are many, many of those across the US. Um, yeah, so the first thing we needed to do was find an artist. We chose Fernando specifically because I had seen him present um, at a at an opera preview. At one point, he stood up and talked about the themes in the opera and things like that and read a little bit of his writing. And he just is very approachable. So I reached out to him. He was happy to work with us. We came up with an agreement. I filled out the grant application. We met to go through scheduling, worked out um, payment, and then started the program. Um, and then all I have to do at the end is report, which is also pretty simple through the Nebraska Arts Council. So again, if you're in Nebraska and you haven't checked them out, please do. It's a great, great way to get some quick funding. So what we've seen so far, um, I've got a list of com programs that we've completed, and then we've got some upcoming programs. And again, we've got 30, basically 30 units to divide among different sessions with Fernando. Um, a side benefit that was not planned uh, was a, the Reader is a, an independent newspaper in, it's kind of a news magazine in the Omaha area and Fernando happens to write for them part-time. So after talking with us and learning about some of the other programs we had going on, he went back to the Reader and said, I would like to do a story on this library and we ended up being the cover story. So that was a great side wow. benefit. Um, yeah, and it brought some new traffic, new people into the library um, and actually opened up some new funding avenues for us as well, which has been a phenomenal side benefit. Um, yeah, so here's Fernando. This is his, his headshot. He's, he's a great guy. Um, so, so far we've seen an increase in attendance at events, an increase in requests for our Spanish language collection, which was not very large, but we're working on it. It's getting bigger. Um, we've also connected with arts organizations in the, in the greater Omaha area. So we have free tickets to the Omaha Symphony. Um, I'll have some for Opera Omaha this spring. Um, and a couple, they've come and done story times. We give those tickets out free to families who come and request them. Um, that's been a great connection for our community. And then the new funding, if any of you have people in your community who invest through Thrivent, which is a, 
think it was I think it was originally a, a Lutheran organization. I'm not sure if that's still their connection, but they are a faith-based organization. So because of their the way it was explained to me is because of their tax structure, they have um, giving that their their um, the people who invest through them they have a certain amount that they can give back to the community every year. So if you know of people in your community who work with Thrivent or have investment available through them, they have a little bit of money every year that they say, I want it to go to this organization. So that's something I learned um, and that's been a good thing for us. We're building a um, pollinator garden with some of that money. Um, we're also doing another program with the Nebraska Arts Council this spring. And I'll wrap it up really quickly because I want people to have time to ask questions. Uh, so those are the steps that we went through. If anybody has questions, I'm happy to share my email. Um, but if you're in Nebraska, tap that Nebraska Arts Council grant. It is Absolutely. it is a great opportunity. We definitely promote them from our side to have had lots of uh, success with libraries using it. Yeah, um, it's not something you necessarily think of because it doesn't screen it doesn't say libraries in the title, but they want to work with libraries. That is, yeah, yeah, they do. They do. Yeah. Um, so if anybody does have any questions, please do type into the question section of your GoToWebinar interface. Um, I think this is just a, such a fun program to do and just so much you get out of it. You know, so many different sessions. It's not just a, you know, a one shot. Right. Right. And yeah. it's been great to have that. He's very connected in the community, which a lot of artists are. So mm -hmm. it's it, that's been a great opportunity for us to kind of reach to to expand our reach as an institution. Absolutely. Um, yeah. So just so just reading what's coming in here. <laughs> um, so did you one question here? Yeah, did you have because there's so many different things is I know libraries are always looking for programming, but this seems like so much for especially a small library. Did you yeah. have any trouble trying to get it all done? I mean, get all of these things scheduled? I mean, it seems to be so many different sessions. It you know, is a lot of different things. Like, so, you know, so many different so many different events. I only work 15 hours a week at the library. Oh, wow. um, and and I, I do some circulation coverage during that time, too. So <laughs> if I can do it, believe me, you can do it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> would be the first thing. But also we piggybacked on things like the Fall Festival was a larger event oh, that we added our artists to. Um, he's doing a bilingual story time for us. So it's our regular scheduled story time. And we're having him come and do it. Um, as a, like a our previous a, presenter said, you don't have to reinvent the wheel every time. You can do something that's the same thing or similar. Yeah. Right. Right. You can kind of tag it on to other events that you already have planned. Um, we did a, a um, so we have movie nights and we had Fernando come in and do a, um, he's a movie buff. And so he d came in and talked about like some of the themes that were in the movie and some of the, the different things. We had a great community conversation about the movie, everything, everywhere, all at once. All right. Awesome. All right. Uh, sorry, we're going to have to move on to the nope, next. You're good. But no, you did perfect. Yeah, perfect timing. I um, want to make sure that all of our 10 minute lightning rounds get done here. So thank you so much, Amy. This is an awesome program. And definitely people will be reaching out to you. Um, we will have links to all emails and whatnot available too. We'll have it added. Um, I don't know if you had it in the slides, but you can put it into your slides for when they do um, get shared. And someone was asking about that. Okay. Um, yeah. All right. I so I. Great, thank you so much.